Hey everybody, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I want to talk to you about the backup strategies that I've created for when I'm at home and also for when I'm traveling. I've kind of developed this system over the last six months or so and the first time I explain it to you, it will look a bit complicated, but it's actually pretty simple when you break it down into its components, into its stages. Um, so hopefully my idea behind this is really just to show you the strategy that I've created so you'll get some ideas for your own backup strategies so you don't lose pictures like I have done before in the past by not doing proper backups or not having a proper system in place or being lazy which is actually the most common denominator for why people lose their stuff in general with backups so let's jump straight in Okay, everybody, here we go. I'm going to split this up into two stages. Stage one, which is going to be about importing and short-term backup solutions. And stage two, which is after I've processed the images and the, the raw files themselves go into long-term backups. But let's start here with stage one. So um, let me just open up here. I've got it all. I've got a chart opened up here in Photoshop. I spent ages trying to figure this out because this is probably the best way that I can easily show you the the workflow rather than do an hour-long video showing you each of the steps that I do I'd rather just show you this so start with the importing process first now the first thing I want to do is talk about CF cards here and I consider this my first copy of an image uh, I really don't delete an image off a CF card until I absolutely have to and I know that I already have copies of it either on my laptop and backups or in already in storage I would rather use and buy multiple CF cards than have to delete an image and be unsure that I've already got a copy of it. CF cards are a much cheaper way of having a backup solution than having no backup solution at all. So I always consider the CF card to be my first copy in the stage one. So the next bit I want to talk about is card readers. Now this might seem like a bit of an odd thing to talk about, but let me tell you a quick story here. I know a guy, a friend of mine, who was talking to the CEO of Lexar, the Lexar, the company that make these amazing CF cards. And he was talking to him about card failures. Because, you know, you're talking about CF cards here. They're flash memory. It's very hard for them to fail. But you often hear horror stories about people's CF cards failing. And Le the guy at Lexar was saying, it's not because of the card. It really is because of the card. It's most often because of the card reader. And let me just explain that a little bit more. You know, as photographers, we spend lots of money on expensive, fast, high capacity CF cards. We spend lots of money on our computers and our software. We have the best of the best. But when it comes from taking the pictures out of the camera or out of the memory card, rather, and putting it into a computer, people often buy a cheap plastic CF card reader from Hong Kong that's going to only cost them 20 bucks and it's going to die. And... That's the problem here, is that it, you, if you use a bad card reader, it can actually cause problems for your CF card. So it's really important that you get a good quality card reader. Uh, there's two options that I can think of on the market. The one I use is the Hoodman uh, UDMA Raw Steel card reader. It's got an obnoxiously long name, but uh, I love it to death. I use it all the time. I actually got a review of it uh, on my website. Uh, I'll put it in the description below. And it's a great card reader. It's really inexpensive for what it is. It's a USB 3 card reader. Really fast, really, really durable, which is what I want because I do travel quite a bit and I need something that's tough and can deal with it. And I've used it for over a year and it hasn't skipped a beat. It's amazing. Uh, there's also the Lexar card option. I, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'll put it in the description below as well. I'll put both um, card readers in the description below. But it's very, very important that you get a good card reader because... If you have faults between the card and your computer, it's you have a problem at the source and you need to fix that. So the next uh, part I want to talk about here is the laptop. Now I consider this my second copy because I always store my images on my laptop. My basic workflow is when I do a shoot, I'll import my card and I'll keep it on my laptop. And I'll keep the images on my laptop until I'm finished. Now I'll keep working on them until I'm finished. So that is always going to be my second copy. Remember, I've always, I've still got a copy on my card because I haven't deleted the image. And on my laptop, I've got a copy of the pictures. But it's always good to have a third part here. And that is why in my next stage, in my second part to stage one, I have short-term backups. And here, 
is where I split it between whether I'm at home or I'm traveling. First one, when I'm at home, I have a Wi-Fi unit by Apple called the Airport Extreme, and it actually has a two terabyte drive in it to use as a time machine. Time machine is Mac's backup system. And this is completely automated for me. This is why I bought it actually, is simply because it's a little Wi-Fi unit that sits there on my desk, two terabyte drive, whenever I'm working on my laptop, on my images, from the second copy, it's constantly making a backup of everything. I think it's every, I'd have to say it's every 30 minutes or an hour. I think it's probably every 30 minutes Time Machine does a backup and it's just a, anything that has changed or been modified, it will make a backup of. So say I'm working on an image and it, uh, between the time when it does a first backup and the second backup, I've done a whole bunch of edits to it. It will save and copy over those new changes to the, to the Time Machine drive. So that's fine. I always have my third copy here, but let's talk about if I'm traveling. Now, since uh, I would have to say it's Mountain Lion, it may be the version before, you can actually have multiple drives to use as time machines. So I've actually got two time machines set up within my computer. One is my Airport Extreme, which is always on automatically whenever I'm home. But when I'm traveling, I also have a one terabyte external hard drive, which I use purely as a time machine. So whenever I'm working on an image, that will be well, let me just put up third copy here. There you go. So it will be, that is always my third copy. So whenever I'm working on images, I'll have the hard drive plugged in and it'll just be making time machine backups all the time. So that's that. That's the stage one. So I'll always have one, two, three copies. So I'll have one on my card, one on my laptop, and then one in the time machine. So if one fails, I've still got two backups. If a second fails, well, you still got a third, but you better be panicking at that point. Okay, so I've already said it before, but after I've done this, after I've got all these three, I am post-processing my images and I'm staying in stage one until I have finished editing my pictures. When I have finished editing my pictures, I go to stage two, processed and long-term backups. And the first one I want to talk about here is a Synology. It's called the Synology DS1813 Plus. It's actually a NAS server. It's an eight bay eight bay hard drive server basically connected nas stands for network a access drive i'd have to say i'm going to be murdered by nerds now but this is an incredible piece of kit uh it's not cheap i will say that um my setup that i have i did spend probably over a thousand pounds on it um not just for photography but it's also tell you what i've actually let me pull up a picture here that's the, the, this is my, this is my baby. I love this thing to death. It's great. Um, you'll see here that I've got two drives here for photos in RAID 1 and then a clone. It says here, photos, clone 1. I'll explain what this is in a minute. But basically, this is an idea to give you what the box looks like. It's a whole bunch of hard drives in here. There's eight bays. And it's connected via Ethernet to my, to my airport extreme, actually. So I can connect to it wirelessly when I'm in the house or even when I'm abroad, I can actually connect to this server. That's why I bought a network access drive so I can actually access it from wherever I am in the world. So let's jump back over into Photoshop here for a second and we'll talk about this. So as you saw before, I actually have one setup uh, is two terabyte hard drives set up in RAID 1. Now, a lot of people may be asking what is RAID, what's RAID 1 and all the rest of it. I won't go into explaining it just yet, but basically what this does is it takes two two terabyte drives and instead of equating to four terabytes, it equates it to two. Now, why would you do that? It's basically so if one hard drive fails, it still has a copy of it. These work in sync. These two hard drives work. They're basically linked together. So if one fails, you still have a copy because that's the ultimate fear here. This is long term backups. And if a hard drive fails, you're stuffed. So you always want to make sure that you've got backup upon backup. So if one hard drive fails in this setup, I can pull that hard drive out and I can put another one in and it can rebuild. I'll get on to rebuilding in a minute, but this basically means that I'll have constant backups of everything. So what else do I have here? I also mentioned earlier that I have a clone and that is my second copy. Uh, it's a one, two terabyte drive again that is an exact clone of the RAID system. Now, why would I do a clone? Um, as I was saying before, RAID is, they're linked together. 
So say one half of the links break and you have to replace it. It's very easy to do. You just take the hard drive out. As you saw before in these, those slots, you just push it and you can take the hard drive out. But when you're putting in a new hard drive, um, the setup becomes vulnerable because it has to rebuild and that's quite a heavy process to do. Uh, it's quite cumbersome and occasionally when you're rebuilding in raids, errors happen and they do break. So what could potentially happen is you could have everything in your raid and your setup and you're rebuilding it. One hard drive fails, you put another one in and as it's rebuilding overnight, because this will take some time, the second hard drive breaks and you have nothing. That is why I have a second, well, technically a third, but really a second clone of everything. So I've got two redundancies here in my own bedroom. This is, this is actually the Synology drive sits just behind my desk over here. I can actually look at it over here. It's, by the way, if anybody's wondering, it's super quiet. It's absolutely lovely. I love these Synology things to death. I can actually blame RC Concepcion on these. He got me completely hooked on these. So that's why I've got the, I've got, okay, so let's just go over this again. I've got first copy is uh, two, two terabyte drives in RAID 1. And the second copy is clone of the two terabyte drive. But what happens if my apartment catches fire? What happens if I lose everything in my apartment? I'd want my pictures. And that is why at this point, you go on to part two of stage two, cloud backup. And I use a thing called Amazon Glacier. Uh, this is for some people may or may not have heard of this. Think of it as Amazon S3. Uh, I think Amazon S3 stands for simple storage solution. Glacier, they call uh, cold storage. The difference between Glacier and S3, I won't go into too much detail just yet, but S3 is more for if you want instant access to your stuff online. Glacier is more of a slower paced. Uh, it takes some time to retrieve your files. It's more cold storage. You put it in there and you just pray that you never need to access it, but it's there. Uh, the benefits of doing Glacier is it's a hell of a lot cheaper. That's why I went with Glacier in the first place, because at this point you're talking my third copy. Uh, this is, you know, some poo has hit the fan and I need to get my stuff back. I'm fine with paying a premium to get my stuff back on the basis that I'm paying cheaper in order to put it up there because this is my third copy. This is my absolute fail safe if I need to get to it. So let's talk about it here for a sec. It actually makes a backup of my RAID 1 setup every single day at 8.40 a.m. just after I've left work. And the problem I've had with cloud backing up and cloud stuff in general is it hogs up your internet. I've used um, Dropbox before for storing all my images. And the problem is, is that you will never be able to upload everything all at once because it's constantly trying to catch up. But I have this set up when I'm in work, just in the background. So it's just downloading and it's only, I can set up the speed that it takes. So it will only hit my, it will only hurt my bandwidth a little bit, but it'll just be constantly doing it every day. And it takes a little while to do the initial setup because it has to upload. Because say you set it up and what I had, and then I put in, a couple of hundred gigs worth of pictures. So it had to upload all of that up at once. But once it's there, it's there. And some people worry, oh, well, if it does the next stage of your backup, won't it redo everything? And the good thing about the Synology is that it won't. You can actually set it up that it will only back up to the cloud new or updated files, which is really important because say you've got a hundred gigs worth of pictures and you only update one picture. You don't want the whole 100 gigs to be updated again. So it will basically, it looks between what they've got on their server, what you've got on your server, and it goes, okay, well, it looks like you've only got these files here on your server, which have been updated. So let's only update them. So that's a really great solution that I love about this is that it's all just instantly uploaded the bits that have only been changed. And that is my third copy. That is my complete fail safe. So let's go over this one more time. I know it looks a bit complicated when you're looking at it on screen like this, but it's really quite simple. Let's turn off stage two completely. So stage one again is I've got three copies here of all my images. One will be on my CF card. That's my first copy. I keep a copy on my laptop and then I have a copy within my time machines, whether I'm at home or I'm traveling. 
and I post process my image, my images rather. And at stage two, I'm actually taking those pictures from my laptop and moving them to the Synology drive. I no longer keep them on my laptop because they're finished. I don't need them anymore. I don't need instantaneous access to all my pictures. Okay, so that's the pictures going in from the laptop into the Synology, into the RAID 1. That's my first copy. And then the copy from my Synology is being made into the clone. So that's my second copy of images. And then from there, Glacier takes over and then makes a copy of my RAID 1 setup. And then that goes up and is my third copy. So I now have really quite strong redundancies here. This has taken me quite a while to kind of figure out and process it. But hopefully this has been a little bit helpful here for you. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll leave links below in the description for all the different services and all the different products if you want to have a look at them. I'm not saying you have to use them or anything like that, but it's simply because this is the stuff I use all the time. This is the stuff I found works and I really enjoy this entire setup here. I think that's it for me. But again, as I said, if you have any questions, let me know. This probably will require a couple of viewings just to get back up to speed with it and kind of understand it all. But if you do have any questions, if you did, if you did find it confusing, please feel free to leave a comment or even email me. You can email me at craig at destructivepixels.com. So I guess that's it for today. Um, hopefully you have find, found this useful. Um, I think I'm done. Catch you guys later.